Hello, welcome to the second tutorial about the AG Granular Suite. This tutorial, which is divided into three parts, will teach you everything you need to know about the control module. After completing all the three parts, you should be able to start programming your own granular sounds. This first part of the tutorial contains an overview of the main control panel of the module, as well as detailed description of the parameter control unit. You will also learn how to access HTML documentation which contains descriptions of all module's parameters. As mentioned in the previous tutorial, the control module is used to generate grain parameters as well as to trigger grains. As you can see, there are some controls on the front panel of the module. They are meant to provide easy access to some settings of the triggering mechanisms, and the same controls are also available from the main control panel. If you hover over one of the controls, a pop-up will appear containing the OSC name of the corresponding parameter. You can look up a description of the parameter in a HTML reference file included with each module. This file can be easily accessed from the drop-down menu on the module's front panel. Before we open the main panel of the control module, let's load the samples and turn everything on to see if we can hear any sound. If you need to adjust the volume, you can do it by turning the green dial on the engine module. As you can see, the control panel is divided into many subsections. On the top in the middle, there is a section for controlling trigger sources and window parameters. Just below there is a waveform display in which you can view all the loaded samples. Then there is the list generator and a little section labeled all, which we will talk about later. There is also a small grain effect section, which for now only contains grain reversing. All the rest are what I call the control units, which control different grain parameters. All the control units contain exactly the same algorithms. There are some additional controls on the length, position and stereo out units, but we will discuss them later. Here is an overview of what is available in a single unit. On each grain trigger the following operations are performed. First, a value is selected from a list. This can be done either randomly or in cyclic fashion. Then an offset is added to the value selected from the list. And after that a random value is again added. The random number generator at this stage supports six different continuous distributions. Finally, the value can be further modulated by an external source. This will be discussed further in tutorials about preset interpolation and external control. Now let's see how it all works in practice. I will base my demonstration on the transposition unit, since with this parameter it should be the easiest for you to hear how different stages contribute to the final generated value. In the middle of a control unit, there is a multi-slider, which you can use to modify the values used by the list algorithms. As you modify them graphically, corresponding numerical values appear in the first box on the right. You can also enter the values directly in that box. After entering a value, click somewhere outside the box, but still within the same control unit. The list can contain up to 512 elements. You can change the visible range of the elements by using the two boxes in the top right corner of the unit. Sometimes you might also want to change the vertical range of the values shown on the multi-slider. You can set it manually or press this button here, which will fit the range to the minimum and maximum values in the currently displayed fragment of the list. Let's turn grain triggering on. You should probably find some pitched sound to better hear changes in the transposition. Let's also slow the metronome down. That should do. Currently the transposition unit is set to read only the first element of the list, so nothing is changing unless we manually change the value of this element. In the two middle boxes on the left, we can change the range within the list which we would like the values to be selected from. By the way, the indexing of the list starts with zero. As you can see, transposition value is now randomly selected from the first four elements of the list. A 
As you may have noticed, the transposition values are expressed in semitones. We are currently using the weighted random algorithm, although the weights of all elements are equal, therefore the probability of selecting each one of them is the same. To change the weights of the elements, you can either enter the value in the text box on the far right, or after switching the multi-slider to weights mode, you can edit them graphically. As you can see, now the third element is selected most often, since its weight is the highest. There are two other algorithms for selecting values from the list in a random fashion. No dupes, which avoids direct repetitions, and earn, which doesn't repeat until it has selected all elements from the list. You can reset earn's memory at any time using this button here. Now let's change to the cyclic mode, which turns the list algorithm into a step sequencer. The list can be traversed up or down. Finally, there is the weight parameter, which can be used to specify how many grain triggers the algorithm will weight before it selects another element from the list. As you can see, now new value is being selected every third trigger. Before we move on, there are a few more controls related to the list algorithms which I need to mention. The round button in the top right corner will set the range of currently visible elements of the list to match the list selection range set in the two boxes here. Then there are three toggle buttons in the bottom left corner. The first, if enabled, will cause the cycle to reset every time a preset is recalled. This is useful when several control units set to cycle mode need to be synchronized. The second toggle disables list element highlighting, which can be used to save CPU. It is particularly useful when multiple control units use the list selection algorithm and the grain triggering rate is high. The last toggle disables the updating of text boxes to display numerical values contained in the list while they are being modified with the multi-slider. Now, since you know everything about the list algorithms in the control units, let's move to the next step. After a value is selected from the list, a constant offset is added to it. This box here can be used to set the offset value. As you can hear, it effectively transposes the values generated by the list algorithm. The final step is the random number generator. I will stop the list algorithm by setting the range selection minimum and the range selection maximum both to zero. Let's add some randomness to the transposition value by changing the maximum deviation parameter to one. Now, each grain is randomly transposed by the value between minus 1 and plus 1 semitone. Let's change it to 6 semitones. Since the random distribution is continuous, the transposition intervals produced rarely fall within the equal tempered scale. But we can use this toggle here to round the randomly generated values to the nearest integer. Now let's turn the list algorithm back on and see how everything works together. As mentioned before, the random number generator supports six different continuous distributions. When you select a particular distribution, corresponding parameters will show up on the right. You can read more about the distributions and their parameters in the HTML documentation as well as other resources like Wikipedia. The last thing to mention before we finish is the freeze feature. When it is on, all algorithms within the unit are bypassed and the grain parameter is fixed at its most recent value.
This concludes part A of the control module tutorial. In the next part, we will review all grain parameters which can be controlled with this module. We will also look at features specific to some control units.